Hyatt's Dwyer, June the 3rd, 2019. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Andy Ruiz's upset of Anthony Joshua. Andy Ruiz is the new heavyweight champion. Now first, let me just say this. I'd like to know what odds everyone got. Let's make this a moment, right? I got 9 to 1 odds. On the telecast, they were throwing around 20 to 1 odds. I understand some Vegas casinos had 14 to 1 odds. Quite frankly, this brother's feeling a little bit ripped off. It's all good. It's all good. But tell us your story. What odds did you get on Andy Ruiz if you bet on him? Right? As an aside to people and to movies, this fight really reminds me of the scene in Color of Money where Paul Newman, with the big reputation, runs into Forrest Whitaker. And the scene ends with Forrest Whitaker asking Paul Newman, you think I have to lose some weight? Well, let me just say this. Was the problem with Anthony Joshua or was the problem with us? Right, going into this fight, you didn't have to be deep or clever to realize that Andy Ruiz had the fastest hands of any opponent Anthony Joshua faced in his career. Right? Joshua never faced hand speed like this. You also didn't have to be that savvy to realize that Anthony Joshua going into the fight, whatever his status, had only had 22 professional fights. Less than Andy Ruiz, less than Tyson Fury, less than Deontay Wilder. Right now, given that all but one of his fights ended by knockout, you also didn't have to be clever to figure out here that Andy, excuse me, that Anthony Joshua might not know what to do when he's badly hurt. Right? He fought another giant in Vladimir Klitschko and Klitschko knocked him down. But then Klitschko looks at him. Joshua survives not because he comes in and clinches Klitschko. Right? Not because when he's hurt he suddenly has great defensive skills and has a hand up and is you know preventing Klitschko from finishing the job. No he survives because Klitschko who used to spar with him takes his foot off the gas. So all of us going into this fight should have at least thought that it was an unknown what would happen if Joshua got caught if the other guy stayed in the pocket and pursued him with fast hands, with combinations, with power punches, right? We should have at least thought, wow, is Joshua the kind of guy who could grab the shorter man like Ali grabbed Joe Frazier when he was hurt? Right, understand, Ali gets blown out the first fight. The second fight, he's hugging Joe Fraser. Shouldn't have been allowed to. He's pushing down on Joe's neck. Going into this fight, what exactly did we know about Anthony Joshua's survival skills? Right? Well, let me just say a few things here, a few thoughts. Because understand, when they post odds, whether it's 9 to 1 or 14 to 1 or 20 to 1, those odds represent probabilities. So the 9 to 1 odds are telling you that if these two guys fought 10 times, Joshua would win 9 times to every one that Ruiz would win. Do you believe that now? Aren't the problems here structural? 
If I'm Anthony Joshua, and I know Joshua gets the first knockdown in the fight, it is an excellent left hook, no question about it. But if I'm Anthony Joshua, I have to ask myself, even with an immediate rematch clause, whether I'm going to know what to do with this guy's hand speed four or five months from now. I know they're trying to build up the zone, and I understand Joshua is one of the marquee fighters with Canelo on that network. Right, but if I'm Joshua, I really have to ask myself, right, am I ready for this guy again in an immediate rematch? Right, he might not be. Let me tell you, people around him need to have a frank talk with him. I've seen other guys who look like they were on rolls, Shane Mosley back in the day lose to a ringer, an excellent fighter who somehow was overlooked by the public, Vernon Forrest. And then, of course, mostly convinced because of the hype around him from the public, people like us, from the promoter, from his entourage. Because of the hype, he took on Vernon Forrest again. And guess what? The second time around, Forrest still had the jab. Forrest still knew how to use length. Forrest still had his skill set. I got news for you. I've watched Andy Ruiz for years. Four or five months from now, he's still going to have the hand speed. He's still going to be willing to stay in the pocket. This is a guy who gets dropped for the first time in his career. And when he gets off the canvas first, let's contrast Ruiz getting off the canvas to Joshua getting off the canvas. Right? Understand, Ruiz gets off the canvas. I want you to look at the tape. He shows to the referee his gloves. Referee talks to him. Ruiz is active with the ref. He nods at the ref. He makes sure that his body language reflects his willingness to continue. Folks, after the second knockdown, after the second knockdown, the referee says to Joshua, walk to me. Right? Walk to me. I'm telling you, I've seen a lot of fighters. When a ref says, walk to me, that guy's practically running to the ref. He wants the ref to know player, I'm ready to continue, uh, flash knockdown, just got buzzed, I'm coherent, right? The ref says to Joshua, walk to me. Keep in mind, Joshua had been dropped by Klitschko, had already been dropped by Ruiz. So by the third knockdown in Joshua's professional career, he should have understood the urgency isn't he fighting an American on American soil? Hasn't he already been dropped in the fight? Right? Maybe the first time you're dropped and you get up, you say, well, the ref's not going to stop it now. The second time you get dropped, don't you get up thinking, hey, I, I got to show the ref that I'm serious here. Ref says to Joshua, walk to me. Joshua doesn't take a step. Terrible body language. I don't know if it was embarrassment, whether he wanted a way out, or whether it was a sense of entitlement. Folks, the ref's not on the Joshua payroll. The judges aren't on the Joshua payroll. This is a fight. The belts hang in the balance once the fight starts. You're not anyone special. You're just another fighter. So how Joshua gets off the canvas, looks at the ref. The ref says, walk to me. Walk to me. And Joshua doesn't move. The referee lets the fight continue. Joshua fans need to remember that. 
his reactions, his interaction with the referee after the second knockdown was absurd. Well, let's talk about some reasons he lost, because I want people watching this video to just key on some Joshua traits when you watch the replay. Now, understand, Joshua is truly a gifted puncher. 